Hello everyone and welcome to the Super Bros Kitchen. I am Chef Reg and today we're going to be cooking up, actually baking up, our famous cinnamon rolls. We're going to try to make a pear compote as well as an apple compote as well as a strawberry compote. And then we're going to do our traditional take on the cinnamon roll with just the classic brown sugar and cinnamon. So let's get started. We're going to start with one cup of warm water followed by two satchels of our active dry yeast. Goes in, followed by a half a cup of granulated sugar. Then we're just gonna give this a little mix up and we'll let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes until it gets frothed up. You gotta activate the yeast here. The sugar helps it along. Okay, so we're just over here at our cooktop here and we're just going to warm up our whole fat coconut milk. One cup is what we need. So we just go in here like this. And we're just going to put this on low and let it warm up. As you can see right here, we have our beautiful Yukon potatoes. I have a little bit more than two cups, but we're going to mash them and then, and then we're going to measure them out once they're mashed. It's more accurate that way. Okay, we're back everybody, hello. We're just gonna take our Yukon potatoes off now. Pour them into a strainer. Turn off the heat. And we'll put the potatoes back in our bowl. And we'll go over here and we'll mash them up and add them to our yeast. Okay, welcome back everyone. How are you? We got our we have our potatoes here, you cut potatoes. We are going to mash them up and then we'll measure out two cups. So we'll just go into a stand mixer here. Grab ourselves a mixing paddle. And we'll just put it on low. Break it all up. We'll speed it up a bit. We're not going to add anything to these potatoes, we're just mashing them up. Just going to scrape down the side here. The uh, stand mixer is much better than hand, uh, doing it by hand here at this point because we're going to remove a lot of the excess moisture with the high speed mixer than you would just mash it with your hand. Want to get them blended really nice. That should do it. Beautiful. I've got a big platter here I can spread the potatoes out on. So I'm just going to give this a couple minutes here and then we should be good to go. Okay, we are going to make our filling, brown sugar filling here. So we're going to go with two cups of packed brown sugar, roughly packed. 
just going to go with three tablespoons of cinnamon here. I believe that's enough. We're just going to lightly zest these guys. Let's get a little bit of orange flavor in here. We don't want to have just some citrus to help break it up a little bit more. Who doesn't like some fresh orange? So good. That's my twist on a cinnamon roll. I love to put some orange zest uh, in my brown sugar mix. Just the zest of a couple of oranges is all you need. Nothing special. A little goes a long way here. Then you get to eat the orange after, which is really lovely. Oh, there we go. I just have mini oranges. I have Japanese mandarin oranges. Whatever you have, right? Zest is zest. Now we're just going to mix all this up. Okay, we're back everyone. Our potatoes now cooled off. We're just going to measure out two cups here of the potatoes. That's one. We're going to the big pot. Oh. Looks like a yeah, I'll have some leftover flour too. Oh, 20 of them. Yeah, that'll be good, right? Yeah. Nice little lunch or something. Maybe make a mini video of it. Yeah, sure, that'd be great. The viewers will love to see us make some milkies, right? Now we're going to go in with our yeast. Look at that, it's nice and frothy now. about everything goes in at this point here. We're going to go in with our one cup of the warm coconut milk, followed by a half a cup of room temperature softened butter, followed by two teaspoons of salt. Then we're going to crack in two eggs. And then we're just going to carefully mix this together and then we'll slowly start adding the flour until we get a perfect light fluffy pillowy dough. You want to add this flour slowly because you're probably not going to need it all and if you use too much it's really hard to come back from it. So we just want to gradually add it in. about good. white square or, or yeah. it's a red square with a white circle. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it looks yeah, like it's there's recording, a... it's recording. That's recording. 
I know 100% when I'm fucking that's good. <laughs> I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, man, this is a lot of steps to redo. Yeah. Okay, we got it here. We got a nice look at. She's pretty much all mixed in. If you got a few lumps, it's not gonna matter because we're gonna need this for 10 minutes and anything that's left in here, it's gonna get mixed in. Right, so now what we're gonna do is start slowly incorporating our flour into here and we'll just fold it in. We'll just keep folding. There's eight cups of flour here. And my secret to this recipe is I use 1.5 cups of bread flour mixed with three cups of cake flour and the rest all purpose flour. And that really gives you the perfect, the perfect light fluffy dough every time for this recipe. It makes a lot of uh, cinnamon rolls. These things are big. So we're just gonna keep folding this in slowly until we get a perfect dough. And then we'll pull it out onto a lightly floured surface and we'll knead it for 10 minutes. Got a nice uh, sticky dough ball here. We're not too far away from making it perfect. Got some bread flour here spread around. We're a little low on the flour here. There we go. She's beautiful, look at that. Not sticking anymore. Need it a minute. We're just gonna keep working it for 10 minutes. You can set your timer here. 10 minutes of beautiful music just for you. Ha, ah, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> with a dish towel for one to two hours at this point. It'll double in size here. Here we go, we are gonna make our three different compotes. We're doing an apple compote, we are doing a pear compote, and we are doing a strawberry compote. So let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start with the apple compote here. So we're gonna go in, this one we're gonna do in a Dutch oven, just cause it's what I have. Just use a regular pot. Just put the bowl aside. And I already have a tablespoon of, of lemon juice. I have these sitting in lemon juice because then they don't oxidize. And we're gonna go into this pot here with the pear. And also I have them sitting in a tablespoon of lemon juice. So I don't have to add that here. Same with the, stro uh, the strawberries. I'll have to add the lemon juice too actually. I never did to the strawberries because you don't have to worry about them oxidizing. We'll put the bowls aside for later. So strawberries into this pot. And here we have about roughly four cups of each. Maybe a little less of the strawberries here. But we're close, it's about four cups. Okay, so we're gonna start with one. We're gonna start with the apples first and we're gonna start with a teaspoon of cinnamon powder. You don't use too much cinnamon here. You can even dial it back a little bit because there is going to be cinnamon as well mixed in. And you want to spread it around. We're going to be mixing all this up really well. There's also nutmeg we're putting into the uh, into the apples here, and that's just a quarter teaspoon. Throw that in. Also allspice. We're going to throw in a quarter teaspoon. Okay, set this aside here. 
And then we need to add a quarter cup of water to each of these. Quarter cup of water into one. Quarter cup of water into the strawberries. Quarter cup into there. We have a little bit more of the uh, pears, that's why I put a little bit more. I did about a quarter and I did about a half a cup of water into the pears just because I have a little bit more. You can adjust as needed. And then next we're going to do a half a cup of granulated sugar into each. There's about a half a cup of sugar. Half a cup of sugar. Then we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of salt here, just regular salt, pine salt. There we go. Like I said, I put a little bit extra into my pears because I have more. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. And just a half into the strawberries. And that's good. For our apples, we are done. We're gonna turn this now on to low for now. For the pear now, we're going to go in with one teaspoon, a little bit shy of a teaspoon of cinnamon. Got a little bit more pears, so we went a little bit heavier. Okay, into the pear, we're going to go with a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger here. Okay. And then we're going to go with a quarter teaspoon of ground cardamom into the pears. Okay, now we have all of these done. We're going to get them all in low and then we're going to have them a good mix up here. We want to get all of the juices and flavors mixed up nice. And then we're just going to get the heat up to medium and render these guys down. We're going to watch them slowly cook. See, we're just going to try to coat everything nicely. Once everything's coated, then we can go and turn it up to medium. We'll okay, mix the strawberries up. Just getting all the sugars coating evenly. That way these are going to render down and caramelize. I've got all of our strawberries here quartered. If they're big, you want to quarter them. If they're just medium size, you just half them. The apples and the pears, it's your personal preference. I like to do a bowl. I like to do a nice dice on these guys. And the pears, I like to get a nice fine dice. The apples are, you can leave a little bigger. See our pears here. I like to dice our pears nice and small. Now this compost, I mean, you're going to have a lot of leftover compost. This stuff, this stuff here is so good on so many things. You put this in your fridge, put it in a zip top bag, you can freeze this stuff, use it in your oatmeal in the morning. You can, uh, you can make like some treats with bananas and ice cream, uh, vanilla ice cream. You can pretty much put this on some toast and you're good to go. It is so amazing and so yum. It's good in the mornings. 
gives you that little burst of energy, a little bit of sugar you need sometimes in the morning to get going. So what we're doing is just coating this up. Then we're gonna bring our temperature over here up to me. And these are gonna render down and cook for 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes. We'll see how it looks. And we'll be right back here to punch down our dough. It's been resting now. We're gonna go get our, our cinnamon and brown sugar ready so we can uh, coat. Oh, look at that, see, bubbling already. It's looking good, it smells amazing in here. So we're gonna let these cook down. Everything's coated nice. There we go. We've got a strainer here and we're just going to pass the strawberries through. Because we don't want all the juice, but we'll save the juice. The juice is really good. We just want the strawberry chunks. That's all we're after. work it around. Don't want to push it, you just want to work it around. Like folding. Okay guys, we are going to candy some bacon here. How to do that is we take a quarter cup of brown sugar, put it in a bowl. I like to spice up my candy bacon a little bit, so I'm going to take a quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper here. There we go. Just enough to give it just a little bit of heat. Not too much. Mix it all around. Tie in evenly mix through the sugar. So we're just gonna take bacon and we're just gonna coat it perfectly. We want it all coated. Then we're going to take it, shake it up, and just lay it up nicely across the sheet here. Okay, so we're just going to toss in a couple handfuls here. Uh, Never have too many of those. Toast them up. And turn it down to medium low. Okay, welcome back. We are going to make our cream cheese glaze. So we're gonna go in with 113 grams or four ounces of softened cream cheese. I'm using light cream cheese here because it's light. Then we're gonna go in with a quarter cup of unsalted room temperature butter. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna go in with a one and a half cups of the powdered sugar. There we go. 
syrup. Do a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, now we're gonna need a quarter teaspoon of salt. Followed by two to three tablespoons of heavy cream. We'll put a couple in here and we'll get the blender going and then we'll add the third one if we need it. Start on low. Then we'll slowly speed up. There we go. Get a spatula. We're just gonna scrape down the sides here one time. It already looks really good in here. Let's go in with one more tablespoon at each, the third tablespoon here, because we want this to be more like a glaze. We're going to make a royal icing, a royal frosting now, to the cream cheese right here. It's beautiful. It doesn't fall out. That means we're good. Okay, so we're gonna get started making our royal glaze recipe for the cinnamon cinnamon rolls. So we're gonna start with one and a half cups of our powdered sugar here. Go in. Half cup. Good. See all we need for the powdered sugar for the day here. Okay, now we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of the vanilla extract. Okay, now we're just going to add the quarter teaspoon of salt. Put it in. Followed by two to three tablespoons of our heavy cream. Start with two again. Add it on. Put it on low. Welcome back. We are going to have the reveal on our cinnamon roll dough. And it is definitely huge. So now all we're going to do is just punch it down. See, it's been deflated. It's so soft and beautiful, this stuff. It's fun. It's sticky and yucky and gooey. Need a little bit of light flour on here so the rolling pin doesn't stick too much. going to start rolling it out. Just like that. As you can see, I have a bread dough in here as well. Helps give it that gluten we're looking for. Okay, see how soft that's getting? It's like a pizza dough. 
so soft. And we're just going to take our time here. Keep rolling it out. You want to get it thin because this is going to rest again once we have it rolled up. And they're going to definitely double in size. Again, so. You see some of this zest in here? It's so beautiful. I'm just going to take a pizza cutter. And we're going to trim. Trim. And trim. Trim. Get a nice rectangular sheet. This here, we're going to make it another ball. We'll roll it out. We'll get a couple more. sheet here. Now we're just going to grab our stick of butter. And what's in here? What you do is you grab your block of butter here and you butter up your rolling pin. Come on, right? Butter it up. Butter it up. Then we're just going to roll it out. Roll it on. It's the butter and roll. On the pin. On the pin. Cover your roll. Cover your dough nice and evenly here. There we go. Nope. 
holes in here. Just like that. Now we got our filling. Have fun with this, spread it around. Probably enough, we're gonna work it in. Use your hands here, work it in, rub it in, smell all that spices. So we got work it in, get it all nice, get it into the dough. Go. Perfect. Okay. Now the fun part are toppings. So how we're gonna do this? Is we're just gonna make a little pouch right here. The whole row all the way down. This is gonna be the pitch or the pear. to the ends, doesn't matter. Okay. There we go, there we go. It's about good right there. Now we're gonna go with our apple. Don't worry, we're going like pretty hefty here. There we go. All this is gonna get sugared and caramelized. It's so yummy. There. Now we have our strawberry. Strawberry we spread out. And we're good. And we're going to roll it up. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. There we go. Look in. Sugars will seal it up. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, we got a bit of a tear here at the end. Whatever you cut the end off. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna cut them in pieces right now. All right, so we're just gonna go. So we got a pan here lined with tin foil. And 
and we're just going to put them in the middle. Hi there, Chef Reg here. Sorry about this. Our batteries died so we can't show you all the footage of us placing the cinnamon rolls. Definitely one of greasier pans here and bake at 350 degrees for 25 to 35 minutes and enjoy your colossal cinnamon rolls.